Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna focus on one of the required practicals in A-level biology, the root tip squash. Now with this practical, remember you want to identify cells that are in mitosis, identify the different stages of mitosis that they might be in, and potentially calculate a mitotic index. So what we're gonna do today to help you with this practical is go through the key steps of the method with reasons why we're carrying out these steps and get all the way to how we're actually gonna calculate that mitotic index. So first things first, when we're doing the root tip squash, we quite often use garlic roots um, because they're very easy and quick to grow, I suppose. But we are going to just use the very, very tips of those roots. So you're probably going to remove the last, I don't know, five millimetres of the garlic roots. Yeah, it might even be the last two or three millimetres. Now, why do we want to use the very tip? from the pointed end of the root. This is because this is where mitosis is occurring. So at the tips of the roots, you've got regions of dividing cells that are likely gonna be in mitosis. And obviously with this prac, we wanna study mitosis. So we wanna make sure we use regions of cells where mitosis is occurring. So that's why we go for the last five millimeters of the garlic roots. Once you remove those tips, you're gonna place in warm acid. Now you probably used hydrochloric acid for this. So you're gonna have heated that hydrochloric acid up, probably to about 60 degrees Celsius, something like that. You're gonna place these root tips in warm hydrochloric acid for about 10 minutes. Now, why are we gonna do this? There's quite a few different reasons. Placing the root tips in acid is gonna stop mitosis because obviously you are lowering the pH, it's super acidic, it's gonna stop mitosis in its tracks. Um, why else are we doing it? It separates cell walls. So you're going to be able to separate one cell from another because it breaks down the middle lamella, which is the kind of cement between the cell walls. You can even just say it breaks down cell walls or it breaks down the cellulose in the cell walls. And this is so the stain can easily diffuse or pass into the cells because you are going to be staining these cells later. And by breaking down the cell walls, you're making it much more easy for that cell to move in, sorry, that stain, to move into the cell and actually stain the chromosomes and make them visible. Another reason for putting the root tips into warm acid is it does make the tissue or the root tip easier to squash because it makes it nice and soft you're breaking down the cell walls, you're separating the cells, it's gonna be easier to squash later so you get a single layer of cells so the light can pass through. So there's loads of different reasons for the acid. Now obviously once you've put the root tips in warm hydrochloric acid for 10 minutes, you're then gonna rinse them, probably use one of those cute, cute little sieves, rinse it under the tap, make sure you don't lose any of those root tips. And then you're gonna place on slide on your glass slide and stain. Now you might have used acetic orsin or we always use um, toluidine blue. And obviously the reason for using the stain is to stain the chromosomes so they are visible because the chromosomes would not be visible without that stain. And this is a nice blue stain, which gives a lot of contrast so you can clearly see the chromosomes and then hopefully identify which stage of mitosis they're in. And you're gonna place your cover slip over and firmly squash. Again, we should be thinking, why? Well, we wanna firmly squash it to get a single layer of cells so light can pass through. And if I'm gonna extend this even further, I'd say to get a single layer of cells, a thin layer of cells, so light can pass through, so the chromosomes are visible. Now, once I've done this, I'm obviously gonna place my slide onto the stage of my optical or my light microscope. 
We always start on the lowest magnification because on the lowest magnification, you get the widest field of view and it's much easier to focus. Once you've focused it on the lowest magnification, you can, ob you can increase the magnification and you can turn your objective lens to a higher power, increase the magnification so that you can actually identify the stages of mitosis and see the chromosomes on a much higher magnification. But you are going to look at several fields of view. You're not just going to look at one field of view in order to calculate the mitotic index. You're going to look at several fields of view because this is going to help you get a large sample size, which is what we describe as a representative sample. OK, the more fields of view we look at, the more representative or the more reliable that sample is going to be. Now, just to finish this video off, how do we actually calculate mitotic index? So mitotic index, where can I squeeze it? Down here. It's the number of cells in mitosis, which you'll recognize because during mitosis, the chromosomes are visible. So you're basically looking and counting in how many cells can I see the chromosomes? Because the chromosomes will be visible if the cell is in mitosis and you divide it by the total number of cells. So the total number of cells in that field of view. But remember, we're doing several fields of view. So for each field of view, we can count the number of cells in mitosis, we can count the total number of cells, and then we can work out the mean mitotic index. And because we used a large sample size, that mean mitotic index should be representative of that whole garlic root tip. Um, I hope you found that useful. Let me know in the comments, have you done this practical? Did you actually talk about the reasons for doing each of these steps in the method? And did you get decent results whereby you were able to calculate your mitotic index?